Okay, so in this video, I'm going to uh, show another way of solving problem F4-5. So F4-5 is a relatively simple problem. We did this in another video by hand, but it involved this integral. Okay, so this is a problem with a bar with a uniformly distributed load. And because you have a uniformly distributed load, the internal axial reaction force is a function of position. Since it's not constant, you can't use the PL over AE. So you actually have to do the integral. You have to integrate the strain to get the total elongation. And we showed that the uh, mathematics of that last time. Um, the difficulty is, you know, solving for the integral. So it's not that hard. It, it, it's stuff you did as a freshman, but but often we get a little rusty with doing integrals. And sometimes it gets scary. So using programs like Mathematica can make uh, your life a lot easier. Uh, it makes the ability to solve problems with integrals, you know, basically trivial, okay? This is a simple integral. Uh, so let me start Mathematica. This is on a Mac, so it might look a little different if you do it on a PC. Uh, Mathematica is a really powerful tool. I encourage all engineering students that have access to Mathematica to get familiar with learning how to use Mathematica, all right? It's has this nice little notebook environment that lets you easily perform lots of complicated mathematics, cool looking plots. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, there's lots of online help. Uh, so I can't give a full Mathematica thing, but I'll just show you how Mathematica makes solving this problem easy. And hopefully that'll motivate you to, to learn a little bit on your own. So the heart of Mathematica are these notebooks, okay? So here's a notebook. It's like a blank document, but you can put in mathematical statements that can evaluate it. So the, the big one we're going to do here is because we have this integral, it allows you to do stuff like, uh, let's put in a integral. So let's integrate on the variable x, and let's just put in, you know, 3x. squared, whoops, and we can put this whole thing over uh, 1 minus x. So that's kind of a complicated integral, but you can evaluate this from 0 to 2, okay? So I type it in just as you would see it in a text, so that's relatively easy to do. You hit shift return, and it should numerically integrate this for you. Oh, it didn't like the integral. Okay. Well, let's, maybe this is a bad integral for it to do. Let's make it a little simpler and see if it figures it out. Oh, it's because I, wow, I should be careful. I have a singularity here, obviously, at x equal to 1. So let's go from uh, 0 to point 0.2. That's the problem. See, when I had you know, I got a pole here at x equal to 1. That's what it didn't converge. So, so here's the integral. It turns out to be complex. Okay. And, and that's what it is. All right. Let's try one that's more basic. That's what you can see. 3x squared uh, minus 5. Okay. Is it barking at me now? Yeah, there it goes. Once I put it in parentheses, okay? So there's the, the integral, okay? That's what it mathematically evaluates to. All right, the, the, the neat thing about doing uh, notebooks, let's delete this, is that I can also define all the variables for the problem up front. And I don't have to worry about making silly calculator errors because it's quite a powerful calculator as well. So let's define some of the variables. So the diameter is, uh, let's do everything. You can actually do units in here, but let's do everything in terms of uh, SI units. So the diameter is 0 0.02 meters. We're going to assume everything is in meters. Um, what else do we have? We have uh, the, the length, I'll call it capital L, is 0.9 meters. The... Um, 
the distributive force, I'll let's call it W, is um, 30,000, and that's newtons per meter. Again, we'll do everything in SI just so I don't have to worry about unit conversions because I don't write units easily in here. And what else do we need? We need Young's modulus. Uh, we'll call it Young, and that is um, 73.1 times 10 to the ninth Pascals. Okay? So all those variables are now defined. Okay? Now I can do things like define the cross sectional area. A, we know that's going to be uh, pi. It, and Mathematica already understands that pi is evaluated as that uh, over 4 times the diameter. The diameter. We can use the symbolic variable diameter to the second. Okay? So that gives me the numerical valuation for the area. It's stored as the variable A now. Um, and now I can get the integral formula. So delta, that's the elongation. That's defined as the integral from x equal to 0 to x equal L. The expression is... Um, Let's put that's the axial force. That's a function of x over a time young dx. Okay, I won't be able to evaluate this because I actually have to define f, but we know what f is. Let me put it up a step higher. F equals we did that from the um, uh, force balance that force um, free body diagram uh, from the previous video. So it is um, W times L minus X. Okay? So there is the evaluation of F. And now I should be able to do this. And it computes delta as this value, and, and that's the answer. Okay? You can clean it up a little bit. You can actually put in text, and this is a... Oops. F four. What was this? F four five. In hib okay. So we could actually change the font to make it look, yeah, you know, kind of cool. All right. And then you can put it in other notes, you know, we could say we're going to first define the variables. Variable. Um, you know, compute the cross, the cross sectional area, um, compute the internal reaction force, and then find the elongation. So you can actually set it up like, kind of as you would as a homework problem. And the nice thing about this is once you do it once, what am I doing? It doesn't do spell checking though. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can go through and we can say, well, what if the length is now, well, we can, we can change another problem or maybe the distributive force is a function of x. Okay. So now I put in here w, it's actually a function of x. So this is a linear distributed one, and now we can go through and reevaluate everything. Obviously, the a is the same. Now that f is different, you see we have an x uh, in front of it, and then when we do the elongation, it changes the value. 
So this solved the elongation for a linearly distributed uh, force. You can put in other more complicated ones. What if it's a sinusoidal, right? So now it's a has a sinusoidal distribution. Okay. We can go through and reevaluate the um, axial force, and then get find the elongation, and it computes it for you automatically. So very powerful, and I highly recommend using it if you uh, for doing homeworks. Uh, unfortunately, it's difficult to do these things for quizzes, but I mean it's really a very powerful tool. Okay, you can save it. There you go.